Greetings there and welcome to Revna Den. This is a new segment called Side Notes and these will be shorter versions as opposed to the full length episodes that go on for like 45 minutes to an hour. These ones are going to be a little bit more uh, cut down but this will be the first side note that I'm giving which is a prelude to episode 7 which is about monster mashing and uh, spiritual warfare on oppression and possession and how to overcome attacks through deliverance and banishment and exorcism things like that so i wanted to start off a story that i had a few nights ago the night before last actually so this would be this past saturday night on september the 9th hmm. yeah 9 9 i had a dream uh, which is about spiritual warfare, uh, which actually happens a lot. I've, I've been having those for decades now, fighting off uh, spiritual attacks and demonic oppression and stuff like that. A lot of people may be confused as to whether or not such things are real, but if you actually read a bunch of different books from people, especially certain missionaries who go into places like India um, and uh, Asia Minor, um, China, places like that they usually encounter these types of dreams where they're fighting off um, principalities and powers dominions thrones within a certain area uh, like a village or what have you and they fight them off in their dreams and stuff like that and usually when they banish them off a lot of the people or the township comes to Christ because of that so I believe that there is a lot of ethereal spiritual warfare going on and this is one of those stories I was in bed uh, Saturday night, obviously, it was early in the morning, it was like 2.45 in the morning, and I had a dream where I was in a particular room, I was in someone's house, it was their living room, and there was uh, three men there, I believe, and one was a father, and he had kids in the other room. Supposedly, I knew these people. Um, in reality, I don't think I did. I think they were just dream people. Um, and I go into the bedroom to check on the children because they were talking about some issues that they were having in there. I couldn't really make out what they were saying. So I go into the bedroom and they said to watch out for the flies. And I'm like, I don't see any flies. And they're like, oh, they're in the closet with the teacher. And it took me by surprise because earlier in the dream there was a fourth person who was supposedly a teacher and he left he left in the opposite direction of the living room and walked out i'm like no 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 teachers the teacher's gone and they're like no he's in the closet so i go to check and i open up the closet i pull back the curtain because it wasn't a door there was a curtain there and i saw the teacher and he was slumped up on sort of like a shelf in the closet and his face was sort of all mangled and putrid and bruised and he had like green and purple spots all over him uh and a bit of sort of like maggoty pus coming out of his mouth <clears throat> and as soon as i saw him he let out this sort of yell or grunt and a bunch of flies came up around him and you know started to try and attack me um, so I backed off and I started swatting at him but then I just started speaking uh, in tongues like the Holy Spirit tongues and as soon as I started doing that they started sparking up kind of like popping like flames and drop into the ground and as I, I did this and watched them go down I, the teacher sort of got out of the closet and ran out of the room and I left the bedroom making sure the kids were okay I go back out into the living room where their supposed father was and I'm like hey did you see the teacher leave and they're like yeah they you know we, we, we saw them all leave there the three guys that were with him and I'm like yeah well did you ever see him return back into the house so that he could leave again as in like twice and they all sort of looked at me sort of confused and baffled uh, you know sort of with this yeah uh, we didn't see him come back into the house so that he could leave again. He just sort of magically appeared there like he was there twice, but never returned. So <clears throat> as I was discussing this with them, I just sort of shake my head, go back into the room to check the kids. And they were complaining again that there was like some sort of smoke or fire. And so I look and I see this object on one of their dressers and it was billowing sort of this steamish, like foggy smoke from it. It looked like a tube and the smoke that was coming out of it was something like that of how you would see dry ice in those waterfall 
um, contraptions that most people have, not most people, but you know, some people have in their houses, you know, a little, little waterfall and like the smoke sort of rises from it. Well, it was doing that out of this too, but I could tell that it was burning more like the water and it was getting electrocuted or something. So I went and grabbed it and I pulled it out from the wall, the cord and like the glass tubing that was inside this contraption fell out and smashed on the floor and the glass broke everywhere and got water all over the place. And I'm like, oh, well, it's, it's a good thing it's unplugged. But because uh, I was standing in the water and thought I might get electrocuted. And that's when I looked down and noticed the cord was trying to pull itself down to the water almost as if it's trying to electrocute me, which is weird because it was unplugged. And I'm like, well, that's weird. And then I tried to pull it away and it slumped out and another thing fell out of the tube, which was this cord uh, that kept, I guess, like the smoke going. And this thing was like an electrical currency that was like red hot. You could tell that it was like lit up and sparking and stuff. And, and it tried to pull itself down to the water, but I stepped away and got myself out of the water. And that's when I noticed the cord was moving itself up to my face as if trying to zap me and electrocute me or, you know, b scold me or burn me with its hot stuff. And that's when I threw it down to the ground and I knew that it was this demonic entity that was trying to, you know, hidden, but it was like moving the object trying to attack me. And that's when I went back out into the living room and I, I called it out and I tried to speak to it, uh, pretty much five words, um, show yourself, uh, or come out, show yourself coward. But when I did it, and I don't know if any of you had any dreams with any sort of demonic entity or spiritual warfare, but it seems every time you tried to speak, it was almost a constriction, like they tried to stifle your voice. And so it was coming out, not really like I couldn't breathe, but it was, uh, I don't know if you ever seen the movie, The Howling, um, or an old ladies movie about werewolves, but when the werewolf was first exposed to the news reporter, she like couldn't get the scream out. I was like, uh, uh, you know, like trying to, trying to scream or say something and she couldn't cause she was like in this constriction. That's kind of what it was like when you're trying to speak to these demonic entities. I was like, come on. No, 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 no. like talking like that but I at least managed to get those words out because <clears throat> it was I, I I think if you try to take control of the situation like spoke your voice like in the name of Jesus they have to abide so they try and stop that as much as they can but once I did say those words they came out of course there was one then there was another and then another there was like three of them at the beginning and they both they all three of them looked like um like prison inmates but really tattooed you know like how you would see the like any uh oh what are they called the uh m m13 mk13 I, I can't remember the the mexican cartel ones they, they were all tattooed up but really kind of bug buggy eyes and stuff like that and sort of smiling at me and they were taunting me at first uh, and they said that they were going to ask a question. It was almost like a game to them. They were going to ask a question. And if I didn't respond in the right, with the right answer, they were going to kill me. And for some reason, out of all this, this thing, the, the, the whole dream that occurred, I remember all of it, except the question they asked. It was really weird. I can't remember what the question was that they asked me. And I swear that I replied with Jesus Christ, you know, Lord and savior. Um, that was my answer. And they were like wrong answer. And so they started coming at me, but it seemed more demons were coming at me. And by this time they sort of morphed or like changed their look to that of like these, I don't know if you remember the old Italian clowns with the pointy hats and like the white and the, the red, like round rosy cheeks and stuff like that, sort of the big buttons and stuff. They were coming at me with knives and I was going to, like, they were sitting there laughing maniacally as they were, you know, uh, about to attack me. And <clears throat> I was going to put up a defense and I was starting to shove them off when I heard a voice inside me. And I'm supposing it was the Lord, you know, just telling me to just stand still. Don't do anything. It was sort of this notion he was telling me, just don't do anything. Don't move. And I'm like, thinking, well, they're going to pretty much stabbed me to death if they do, but I listened. And so I just stood there and allowed them to attack me. And when they did, that's when I realized that the knives they had were actually butter knives. And not only were they butter knives, but some of them were plastic. They weren't even really, you know, like couldn't even cut you. 
<clears throat> and to top that off, not only were they like trying to slice me with it, but they were slicing me with the flat side of the blade. So they were rubbing like that and like nothing was happening, you know, and I, I could, I, I felt on one of my hands because they had my hand lifted up that they were putting one on top and they were sharpening the knife with it. And I thought they were going to sharpen, you know, like do it to slice my hand off. But that's when I realized that they were actually hitting the metal of one of the knives and they were just running it against that. And nothing was happening. It was just completely useless, like useless attacks. And I'm just like, what is going on? Nothing is happening. And when that didn't work, their continents changed to where they turned into like these old, not old ladies, but like traditional classic, like uh, European embroidered garb, you know, that of like Eastern Europe and like these maidens came out and they were still trying to tag me with butter knives, but they were like uh, taunting and antagonizing and like seductive ways and stuff like that. And like also laughing and trying to sing. And as they were doing this, I heard around me some other singing startup, which I believe was Amazing Grace, and it sounded like Amazing Grace, but the lyrics were different. Like the lyrics were changed up. There was a completely, it sounded like a different verse. And <clears throat> I started singing along with it, and I noticed that also the maidens that were around me trying to attack me also started singing with it, almost like they were compelled, like they had to sing with it. But their continents changed. You could tell that they didn't like it after a while. They're just, they didn't enjoy the singing, and they all scatter. And as that happened, because of the singing, I woke up from my dream, or at least I thought I woke up from my dream. And I'm like, all right, I better get up and like write this down or talk into my phone so I can remember my dream. As I got up, the room started to get darker and darker and darker. And it's almost like a red light went on. You know how you, you turn on those red light bulbs and stuff. And so the whole room is sort of dark and reddish. Um, I guess the dream wasn't over. And I look over to this sort of alcove corner where a doorway was, and I see this little kid sort of sitting there, sort of peeking out, but everything was dark and red and fuzzy, kind of like this grainy, sort of blurry uh, feel to it, fuzzy. And so I walk over to see who it is, and I notice that the kid didn't really have a face. He was trying to turn away and stuff like that, and that's when I kind of knew that it was a, a demon still trying to press on, like sort of... Um, make this haunting eerie feel you know using terror tactics and like the vision of innocence and stuff like that to kind of scare me like the combination of the two it seems like he was using children to cause like this fear and I look over and notice that there were two more coming into the room from whence I came and that's when I realized that I was dreaming and um, for the past couple decades this has been happening a lot not this attack but a lot of spiritual warfare to the point that if I realize that I'm dreaming that's when I start I, I mean I can I can control the dream I go into full effect like I you know conjure weapons I can levitate I can you know like fly upstairs I can do all sorts of stuff as I'm doing these spiritual attacks so once I realized that I was dreaming I levitated myself up and started circling around the room and it was starting to taunt them and that's when they realized that they weren't gonna win this and they fled in the instant that they they booked it I jolted awake I didn't sit up in bed or anything but I just lay there for a while because I still have that attack of the tinnitus in my ear I'm sure some of you have heard this and I've wrote this in my telegram journal as well too there's this constant ringing screaming kind of in the ear seems like a spiritual attack but sometimes as I lay in bed and the fans on I hear things I, I hear stuff like singing or I hear stuff like music or people uh, chanting or like soft spoken words almost angelic but this time I heard kind of like screaming and at first I thought it was my daughters in the other room like there was some trouble and I was about to get up but I was very calm as I was laying there listening to it I'm like maybe I should listen to this, listen to it some more and as I focused in I noticed that it wasn't the girls but it was demonic entities they were literally screaming and yelling and cursing and just <laughs> yeah, just angered at the fact that they couldn't overcome me in the spiritual warfare of the dream and com completely just and probably like a hundred of them is what it sounded like Pro probably more but they, they were just angered and this was not a dream I was wide awake as I sat there and listened to it 
um, <clears throat> wasn't subtle. Like, oh, is that what I hear? It's like it was in your ear. Like they were angry at me. Um, but for some reason, I I, I wasn't in fear um, because usually spiritual warfare doesn't really put me in fear. But this is the, there was something else. I think the Holy Spirit was there as well too because there was an insane calmness that it had. I mean, I, it actually listening to them screaming put me at ease. I was actually very relaxed, very content. And as, the more they screamed, the more I began actually laughing. I was like chuckling in my bed. I didn't want to wake Liz, but I was just like, <laughs> it was like laughing at the complete loss that they had and the complete contentment and solitude and just comfort that, that I had within me. Like, wow, you guys just nothing you can do can even phase me at this point like you don't scare me you don't taunt me you don't threaten me like i i'm not moved by you in any way shape or form and i i almost wanted to fall back asleep to it but i'm like you know what this is spiritual warfare i gotta cast these people out i gotta i gotta send them away and that's when i said you know you go away and in, in Jesus name you have no power here you've lost you know it's like <laughs> just depart from me by the power of the Holy Spirit and the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ through the will of the Father and probably within 15 to 30 seconds after that I, I said that the the screaming faded to nothing but the sound of the fan in my room and it was completely gone so I got up I went on in the living room just to make sure that there wasn't any screaming from the girl's room and there wasn't but i could sense something was was watching me like it, it was it was angry <laughs> like it's like it did not want to lose but it couldn't do anything it couldn't attack me i have this house blessed there's like all the doors have like oil on it and stuff so they can't do any sort of physical or spiritual attack here really but i think when it comes to spiritual warfare it seems to be on a different plane and we could come and go as we want so it's not really per se in the house where the attack was going on but that may be a different subject that i may talk about at a later date is a spiritual warfare in the ethereal and i know a lot of people don't believe that but i've read tons of books heard m many stories of people who did spiritual warfare in their dreams as opposed to just simple deliverance of people who were possessed and stuff even though i did that as well too and that's what i'll cover in the next episode um the the exorcisms that i've i've done so they're interesting stories but <clears throat> i wanted to bring this up one because it just happened a few days ago and I, I didn't want to forget it and two uh because i didn't want the episode to go on for like an hour and a half there's a lot i want to talk about in the next episode and so i think i'm going to do these side notes just to prep you and prepare you for what i'm going to be talking about in the upcoming episode this weekend so these are short little nuggets and this is kind of an idea of the stuff that i do on a daily basis and people wonder why i'm tired all the time but um <clears throat> There's, there's some things that I got from this, and one of them beginning was with a false teacher and or the dead teacher that ran out. I, I don't think this has to do so much with false teachers as it does with, I think, what a lot of prophets have been talking about lately of the duality of these political people. Like, there's a lot of people supposedly who are dead right now, who are imprisoned, and their role is being filled by actors and they're and they're I mean they're plain as day fake actors I'll also get into the big one with the two presidents where if you look at Biden back in the Obama era where he's VP to Biden now it's so blatantly in your face not the same person completely different actor I, I mean it's it's just it's right there it's right there in your face but I'm also noticing there's a bunch of other people too recently that have been putting on this different facade of different actors taking their place and i don't know why it could be dead could be arrested could be maybe they fled the country and just booked it out of here i don't know but they're taking over with these actors and i think that's going to tie in a lot to the sex uh child sex trafficking ring that's going on a lot of exposure that's going to be brought up because of that because this was in the kids room they were watching and they were trying to warn us of these fake actors and the evil that they were trying to impose upon these children so i think it has something more to do with that the next one <coughs> excuse me i'm slowly getting over that cold trust me it's it's starting to go away but secondly uh there's some other things to look out with the attacks at least from the demonic perspective that i think we're going to see the first one was when they came as the prison inmates they they were big brutish taunting in your face um 
antagonizing you, making threats. And then when they do attack, it'll it'll be shown. It'll be shown in glee. Like they're they're smiling at what they do. They're laughing at it. They're clowns. They're they're just ah. They're they're just maniacally joyous. And I think when we see more of this exposure coming out of who these people are and what happens in the process of what they're trying to do to people, we will see them like it's almost like they can't contain themselves with the smiling and the smirking. It's going to happen a lot. Thirdly, we need to realize that their attacks aren't going to work. Their attacks are big threats. They're, they're going to be laughing at us when they do it, but they're, they're not they're useless they're going to be useless attacks they're the butter knives rubbing against the skin and they think that they're attacking us they think that they're doing damage in my dream they thought that they were really attacking me and it's like i was looking at them like what are you you're not doing anything this is not uh, i i wasn't really laughing at them i was kind of confused like wow you guys are not doing anything correctly and that's going to become blatantly obvious and then when that doesn't work i think they're going to morph and try to turn into something that'll be more enticing to us once we realize who they are and the masks are off and we see the damage that they're trying to do some of them will try and entice us either lure us in through incentives of deception or or lusts or um i didn't want to say these maidens look like succubuses really but it's, it's going to be a kind of on that level where they're going to try and entice us and and like you know um get away from being uh, brought to justice through certain actions that uh, may seem like sort of a, a bonus to some people don't fall for it then when that doesn't work it seems that they were singing the the uh, the hymn with us and I don't know what that means I don't know if that means that some people may turn to Christ in the end or whether willingly or unwillingly um, try to fit into the church or no I'm really a good person honestly but the song when they sang it didn't last long you could tell there was a menace on their face and they didn't like it they didn't want to do it and that's just gonna blow up right in their face they will see it exactly for what it is um, now I do believe that there will be some turncoats there will be some people that'll come to Christ and even though we don't know who these people are yet it's good to keep praying for everyone even the people you don't like I I, I know I got to catch up with that because it's been a while since I prayed for them but I have prayed for people and I think everyone else should as well too that they come to the realization of what they are doing and they need to leave this and come into the kingdom and uh, make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior um, but I don't think in the dream that those were those people. I think there's going to be a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing or ones that are going to try and lure themselves in or sneak their, their, their way in thinking that they are part of this, you know, good group, you know, hiding in between all the people. But it's 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 not going to last long. I mean, they didn't sing long and they, they just they booked it. So um, so there's all that. And then uh, when that doesn't work, lastly, I think they're going to try and just the remainder of them that are left standing holding the bag are going to try and use terror and fear intimidations probably through innocence as with the child in the corner who didn't have a face and he was trying to use terror and like the haunting atmosphere i don't exactly know how that's going to work if it's going to be like the last whimpering threat that they have but by this time i knew i was dreaming I knew what was going on. I looked at them and I, I just, to me, they weren't even scary. They were pathetic. I just looked at them like, I'm going to beat you severely is pretty much what was going through my mind. And right as I was thinking that, that's when they fled and I woke up from the dream. <clears throat> I think the contentment that I got from the screaming in the ear is something we need to pay attention to as well. Uh, they will be screaming and yelling. And this is the demonic entities, I think, so much. Not so much the global elite and the humans that are in it but i think once we get to this point because everything prior to that i believe was the people working the the demonic activity working through the people but i think this one afterwards we may actually go through a certain spiritual warfare where we're going to see the demonic or hear it or just know that it's there we'll be able to sense it but at this point we'll be so over the top done with everything else and prepped and prepared and ready for the spiritual warfare that we're just going to laugh our way through it. Actually, there is one more thing I was thinking of, and it just hit me. I'm going to try and shoehorn it in before I end this episode, and that is the speaking of tongues versus the English. And I found this out in my dream last night, and I never, it never occurred to me before after all these years of like warring in the spirit or in, in dreams. And I'm going to give you a little nugget, which may help. 
if if you know that you're dreaming and you can and you can do this is um when i spoke in tongues and those flies fell i didn't have any constriction it it just i i spoke in the spirit and there was no defense or offense that the demonic entities could use against that like um when i spoke in english as i said before you know uh, come out show yourself cowards i was speaking my own tongue in english and they were constricting it they were they were they had some sort of power over the natural human language but when you speak in tongues i believe you're allowing the holy spirit to work through you and therefore they have no defense so if you ever come across this whether it's in reality or in your dreams or something you have any sort of spiritual warfare try to speak in tongues and see if that you know helps you out a lot more or see if they just don't have any defense against it and i'm going to try that next time as well too if i remember um because the english the dreams that i always had and it wasn't just this one many other dreams that i had when i try to do that and speak to them and like you know speak uh, by the power of christ but i do it in english uh, they they always they try really hard to make sure you don't talk but the holy spirit tongues just flew right through me it like they it, they just they had no defense at all and they had no way to attack me when i did it so little nugget maybe you can take with you as well so hope that one helps